find the equation of the line which goes through the points negative 3 comma 4 and negative 1 comma negative 2 in slope intercept form. Now when students read this a lot of times they zero in on the fact that it says slope intercept form and that's just for your final answer. But if you try to use slope intercept form to answer the question you're going to be very puzzled. Let's recall what slope intercept form is. Slope intercept form of a line is y equals mx plus b where the m represents your slope and the b is the coordinate of the y intercept so the point that has 0 for x and b would be where you go on the y axis so you can't use this form of the line unless you actually have a point given that has 0 for x so that that point would lie on the y axis and neither of these points have 0 for x so we're going to have to do something else but then we're going to give our final answer in this form since that's what it was asking us for so by the end of the problem we will solve for y and make sure it looks like it's in this form but how do we get there we're going to have to be more creative. Now sometimes students will remember another formula, the slope formula, and this one is easier for me to actually just write on the screen than to type it out. So the slope formula is m for slope equals rise over run. And what is a rise? A rise is the difference or the change in the two y values, how far you move from one point up to another. And the run would be the horizontal distance, the distance between two x values. And we just make sure that the second point coordinates are um, aligned with each other on one side of the table, while the second coordinate points also are aligned together. And so that's your slope formula many students remember that one and we can use that directly or we can convert it to point slope form and I'll show you kind of both ways of looking at this point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 and all we have to do to get from the slope formula to this version is to multiply both sides of the equation by x2 x um, x2 minus x1 and so that'll cancel it out if we multiply it on this side this will cancel out to a 1 and then you'll have basically this version of the same formula okay just a slight variation and so you can use the point slope form in that version, in that form, the way it's memorized. Like some students just memorize the point slope form like this. But you can also use it directly from here. So either way that you want to do it, um, for some students, they might like one way better than another. So let's try it by just seeing how it feels when we just plug the information right into this version of the formula. So I'm going to plug in. Uh, in other words, replace my x value. So the x value for the um, first point right here is negative 3. And then the y value for that first point is, is positive 4. So we're going to plug those values in there. Then we're going to come over to the other point, the second point, and we're going to put in negative 1 for x2. and negative 2 for y2 and it really doesn't matter which point you consider to be the first one or the second one as long as you keep your um, what I call them like a married couple keep your xy couples aligned across the bar from each other and you'll be fine all right so we'll go ahead and plug those in like I said let me just write it out so now I'm gonna put the uh, negative 3 down here for my x1 
So I still have the x2 there. And in the top, I'm not going to be able to replace y2 just yet. I'm going to replace the y value, which is 4. All right, now I'm going to look at my pink point, and I will replace the x value with negative 1 and replace the y value with negative 2. Okay, and what else do I need? I need to know what the slope is, so let's simplify this. It's negative 6 divided by negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. And simplifying that, I get negative 3. So now I know that this is negative 3. And I can either go to this version of the formula, or I can come back to this version of the formula. And what I want to do is just ignore, only use one point, basically. So instead of having y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1, I'm just going to only use one point so that this could be generalized for any second point. It doesn't have to be stuck just to the points I was given. And so coming in again and just replacing the values like we did before. So this is going to be a 4. And this is a double negative 3, uh, will become a positive 3 right there. And I'm going to leave the other x instead of having, like I said before, having a second x and y point that I'm going to replace. I'm just going to leave them as variables in general because my linear equation has to have an x and a y in it. And then I'm going to replace the m with negative 3 because we calculated that with those two given points, right? And now all I have to do is put it in the form that I'm supposed to put it in. So I can multiply both sides by this to cancel out the fraction here and just make sure to also do that on the left and simplify. So I'm going to be distributing negative 3x, negative 9 equals y minus 4. And we were told to give our answer in y equals mx plus b form, the slope intercept form. So that means that I want y to be alone. So I'm going to be solving for y here. So I'm just going to come in and undo everything that's happening near the y. So instead of having a subtraction of 4, I'm going to add 4 to cancel that out to 0, and also add 4 on the other side to keep everything balanced. So then I have my new version of the equation is negative 3x minus 5, when I combine these two here, and is equal to y. So now my answer in mx plus b form, or y-intercept form, is negative 3x minus 5. Now if you were asked to give your answer in standard form, from that same step, uh, where were we? Let's go from, uh, let me highlight it. Let's go from this step right here, and let's just say, that you were asked the same question, but you were supposed to give your answer in standard form. So negative, uh, oops, let's use a new color. Zoom out a bit. Give the answer in standard form now. Okay, so you would have to, of course, recall what standard form looks like. It looks like this. And this has to be positive. And no fractions or decimals can be anywhere. 
right? So keeping that in mind, if we go from the yellow step, negative 3x minus 9 equals y minus 4, it's pretty simple because to get all my x and y terms together on one side of the equals, I'm just going to have to subtract y from both sides so that it'll move over to the left. And I can also move my constants to the right because only all the regular numbers are supposed to be on the right. So let me go ahead and get rid of that. And so I have my new version so far, negative 3x minus y on the left and positive 5 on the right. And now we're very close to standard form, except for we can't have a negative there in the front. So we'll go ahead and change the signs of every term. Or some students would say you would divide everything by a negative 1, which will accomplish the same thing. If you divide everything by a negative 1, then a negative divided by a negative becomes a positive. A negative divided by a negative becomes a positive. And a positive divided by a negative becomes a negative. So really, I mean, the easier way of thinking about it is just make sure all the signs of, the, of every term changes to the opposite. So instead of negative 3x, I have positive 3x. Instead of negative y, I have positive y. And instead of positive 5, I have negative 5. And that would be our final result in standard form.